God and please be seated. It's my new dawn era. We shall be rising to pray shortly, saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for setting in disarray every gang up of hell against the growth of the church of Christ in this nation. A loud amen. amen. Matthew 16, 18, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Please rise this morning as we lift our voice, saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for setting in disarray every gang up of hell against the growth of the church of Christ in this nation. Lift your voice as we pray, saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for setting in disarray every gang up of hell against the growth of the church of Christ in this nation. Somebody lift your voice and give God thanks. Thank him intensely. Thank him fervently, saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for setting in disarray every gang up of air against the growth of the church of Christ in this nation. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for setting in disarray every gang up of air against the growth of the church of Christ in this nation, lift your voice, lift your hands, give God thanks intensely. You can thank him in the spirit, you can thank him in understanding, thank him in the Holy Ghost, saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for setting in disarray every gang up of air against the growth of the church of Christ in this nation. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you for setting in disarray every gang up of air against the growth of the church of Christ in this nation. Lift your voice and let God hear your voice of thanksgiving. Lift your voice and thank him, saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for setting in disarray every gang up of air against the growth of the church of Christ in this nation. Thank you, Lord, for setting in disarray every gang up of air against the growth of the church of Christ in this nation. Indeed, the gates of air has not prevailed against us. Therefore, we lay to heart to give you thanks. Lift your voice and thank God. Thank him in the spirit. Thank him in your understanding. Saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for setting in disarray every gang up of air against the growth of the church of Christ in this nation. Father, we thank you. We lay to heart to give you the glory. We lay to heart to give you the praise. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for setting in disarray every gang up of air against the growth of the church of Christ in this nation. We give you praise. We give you glory. We celebrate your name. Thank you, Lord, for setting in disarray every gang up of air against the growth of the church of Christ in this nation. Thank you, Father. Thank him in the spirit. Thank him in understanding. Wave your hands to the Lord as we thank him for setting in disarray every gang up of air against the growth of the church of Christ in this nation. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you for setting every gang up of air in this array. Thank you, Father. We give you the praise. Thank him in the Holy Ghost now. Thank him in the Spirit. Thank him in understanding. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for setting in this array every gang up of air against the growth of the Church of Christ in this nation. Wave your hands to the Lord. Father, thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Give the Lord a big hand and please take your seat. Amen. 
Is my note on error? Next, we shall be rising up to pray, saying, we are going to rise up to pray, saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, send us leaders with the required skills and integrity that will lead this nation out of the woods. In Psalm 78, verse 72, so he fed them according to the integrity of his heart and guided them according to the skillfulness of his hand. Let's rise up right now as we pray with our understanding, saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, send us the required leaders, send us leaders with the required skills and integrity that will lead this nation out of the woods. Lift up your voice and let's cry and call for leaders with integrity and skillfulness. Father, in the name of Jesus, send us leaders with the required skills and integrity that will lead this nation out of the woods. Father, in the name of Jesus, send us leaders with the required skills and integrity that will lead this nation out of the woods. Lift up your voice and let's call unto God to send us leaders with the required skills and integrity that will lead this nation out of the woods. Father, in the name of Jesus, send us leaders with the required skills and integrity that will lead this nation out of the woods. Lift up your voice and call on God to send us leaders with the required skills and integrity that will guide this nation out of the woods. Father, in the name of Jesus, send us leaders with the required skills and integrity that will lead this nation out of the woods. Father, in the name of Jesus, send us leaders with the required skills and integrity that will lead this nation out of the woods. Lift up your voice, call on God, pray in the spirit, pray in understanding that Jesus, that God will send us leaders with the required skills and integrity that will lead this nation out of the woods. Father, in the name of Jesus, send us leaders with the required skills and integrity that will lead this nation out of the woods. Lift up your voice. You can pray in the spirit. You can pray in understanding. Father, in the name of Jesus, send us leaders with the required skills and integrity that will lead this nation out of the woods. Lift up your hands and let's give God thanks right now. Celebrate him for he is sending us the leaders with the required skills and with integrity. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Be seated and put those hands together for the Lord. It is my new dawn era. In a moment, we are going to rise to pray, saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, let the zeal of the Lord continue to consume the hearts of Christians across this nation, thereby taking more territories for Christ in the land. Say loud, amen. amen. John chapter 2, verse 17, the zeal of thine house has eaten me up. Shall we rise on our feet? Lift our voices as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, let the zeal of the Lord continue to consume the heart of Christians across this nation, thereby taking more territories for Christ in the land. Lift your voice and pray that prayer from the depth of your heart. Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus, let the zeal of the Lord continue to consume the heart of Christians across this nation. Let each one's heart be burning with passion. Let each one's heart be burning with zeal, thereby taking more territories for Christ in the land. Lift your voice and pray. Let God hear the voice of your intercession. Call upon the name of the Lord in faith this, uh, this morning. My Father, my God, in the name of Jesus, let the zeal of the Lord continue to consume the hearts of Christians across this nation, thereby taking more territories for Christ in the land. Lift your voice and pray. Pray that prayer from the depth of your heart. Let God hear the voice of your intercession. Pray fervently. Pray passionately. Pray zealously, pray boldly, call upon the name of the Lord. Say, Father, 
in the name of Jesus. Let the zeal of the Lord continue to consume the hearts of Christians across this nation, thereby taking more territories for Christ in the land. Are you praying that prayer? Pray from the depth of your heart. Let God hear the voice of your intercession. You can pray in the spirit. You can pray in your understanding, but engage your heart. Call upon the name of the Lord and do so in faith. Lift your voice and pray. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, let the zeal of the Lord continue to consume the hearts of Christians across this nation, thereby taking more territories for Christ in the land. Are you praying that prayer? Let God hear the voice of your intercession. Cry unto the Lord Most High. He's the one that performs all things for us. Ignite your zeal in the hearts of Christians across this nation, thereby taking more territories for Christ in the land. Lift your voice. You can pray in the spirit. You can pray in your understanding, but engage your heart. Engage your faith. Engage fervently. Engage passionately. Pray with all that is within you. Father, in the name of Jesus, let the zeal of the Lord continue to consume the hearts of Christians across this nation, thereby taking more territories for Christ in the land. You can lift your hand before the Lord and begin to give quality thanks unto the name of the Lord. Appreciate Him. Give Him thanks from the depth of your heart. Father, we thank you. Are you giving him thanks? You can do it in the spirit. You can do it in your understanding. Father, thank you. Blessed be your holy name. For in Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Give Jesus a big hand and be seated. Let's listen to the following announcements. Number one. Covenant Hour of Prayer continues tomorrow, Monday to Saturday. We must all take advantage of this platform for our spiritual edification. The time is 5.30 to 6.30 a.m. Number two, Believers Foundation class holds this Monday for all new converts in our various locations caught across Lagos and Ota. All our new converts and new members are admonished to take advantage of this very important platform for spiritual empowerment that will result in victorious living. The time is 6 to 7.30 p.m. Number three, midweek communion service holds this Wednesday, both here in Kenaland and at all Arizona fellowship centers in Lagos, Ota, and Everon. Remember, we shall be waiting on the Lord in a fast and break with the Holy Communion. The time is 6 p.m. Number four, praise the Lord. For any of our first-time worshipers who may not know how to get back to the departure bus park, please ask any of our church officials around you, such as the protocol, ushers, hospitality, crowd control units, security for any assistance. You may also go to any one of the entrances of the church or the overflow tents and you are sure to find any of these officials who will be more than available to assist you. Number five, praise the Lord. Yoruba interpretation takes place at the faith entrance gallery in all of the services. All our converts or invitees who require interpretation are admonished to take advantage of this provision. Number six, Winner Satellite Fellowship, our house to house fellowship, holds every Saturday. We are all expected to be part of this for our spiritual growth and development. The time is 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Number seven, praise the Lord. It is testimony time. Please let the following testifiers march to the altar quickly. Mr. Adeola Ige and Olayemi Victoria. Olayemi Victoria and Mr. Adeola Ige. Now back to the announcement. Number seven, praise the Lord. Next Sunday, the 4th of November 2018 shall be 
a prophetic service. Come expecting definite encounters with God via his word. Service can do is as usual. Jesus is Lord. Put your hands together for Jesus. It is testimony's time. Please come forward and share your testimony to the glory of the Lord, your name, and what the Lord has done. Praise the Lord. I'm Olaemi Victoria. I've come to thank God for what God did in my life. Last week Sunday, I came for the anointing service. And before then, I used to have a heavy sensation in my chest. And it would look as if something is just going around my head. I could not explain it. But last week when I came, I was sitting at the Hope entrance. And Papa said, um, a man came for this kind of anointing service and was having a heavy sensation in his chest. And about after the anointing, he vomited um, two live frogs and some other things. And I told God where I was sitting, I was like, this is my own kind of testimony. I took the anointing and I went back home. Getting home, the, the thing continued. And in the night before I slept, I took the shot of anointing oil and also anointed my forehead. Then I was like, take the communion. I did that. While going to the bedroom to take my bath, I just started vomiting. But the amazing thing was I had eaten, but it was only water I was vomiting. There was no light. Then something told me, take the torch. Check what you are vomiting. And when I checked it, it was like a snail or is it a shell? I can't explain it. This was what came out from me. And not just that, the next day, while I was telling somebody that, ah, see what God did for me, I realized that. And not just that, the next day, while I was telling somebody that, ah, see what God did for me, I realized that it was still alive. It was living. And since then till now, God has perfected his work upon my life. Give Jesus a clap, a life snail vomited. Is somebody celebrating the Lord? My name is, uh, my name is Adiola, Adiola Ige. I'm here to testify to the goodness and mercy of God. Uh, when, uh, when Papa, our Father in the Lord, when he declared the operation by all means, I was not really engaging. I was not seriously engaged. I said... Let me just be engaging small, small, bit by bit. So that time, I was, uh, I was at my work that time. So I was just engaging a bit. So, you know, they just called me. You know, my you know, bosses, they just called me. They said, guy, you have been laid off. They sacked me. So and I said, ah, what's going on? And something just told me that, okay, just go home. You, you, you have time to engage fully. She, she, Papa has been telling you. Papa has been telling you, engage, engage, engage. You are, you are, you are, you are, okay, now go home and engage fully. So I left that office that day, I went home. So, and I had time, I was engaging, I was engaging. So within that engagement, towards the last week, final week of uh, the conclusion of Operation By All Means, before October 7th. So I was called from where I've applied. I've even forgotten that they will call me. So they just called me, they said they need me for interactive session. Interview. We went for interview. From there, interactive session. We were four. From four, reduced to three. Three reduced to two. Two reduced to one. So I was the only one that was picked to the glory of God. Somebody give Jesus thanks for that testimony. You are the next to be celebrated. We are clapping for Jesus. Make it bigger, louder, bigger, louder, bigger, louder. Shout it loud. Hallelujah. Amen. Today is the last Sunday in the month of October. And it's our custom. Right now it's time for a special end of month. And Mary Thanksgiving with children dedication. Praise God. This is going to be the order we shall be having right here in front. The children that are here today for dedication. The marriages that are here today for Thanksgiving, each of us, wherever you may be, we shall be rigorously dancing as the choir leads us in high praises 
to return all the glory unto God for all his goodness in our direction. Before we get on our feet to begin to do that, remember the scripture says very clearly, Psalm 150 and verse 6, let everything that has what? Louder, please, that has what? Praise the Lord. Therefore, we shall be upstanding and giving glory to God, who has put breath in our nostrils, but beyond that has done us well. Please rise up on your feet as the choir begins to lead us right now, and let's have the people listed right here in front. Choir, please. <laughs> My new dawn era, would you please bow your heads and right now from the depth of your soul, lift up your voice unto the Almighty God. Begin to thank Him for His goodness in your direction, for every good and perfect gift comes from God. Lift up your voice and personally thank Him. Personally thank Him. Personally thank Him. God has been good to you. Express your appreciation. Personally thank Him. Magnify His name. Give him thanks, give him thanks, give him thanks, give him praise, give him glory, magnify him for all he has done, for all he's doing, for all he's here to do in your life, magnify his name, give him glory. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are before you today with hearts of gratitude for every good thing in our lives. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. For all the children that are here today, for dedication, they are your heritage. They came from you. Father, thank you for giving them to us. And right now, these children are being anointed and dedicated unto you. Father, let your power rest upon them. Let this anointing mark them out from every form of evil. As they have been anointed right now, let each of them fulfill destiny. Let them be sources of joy, both to their parents and to the body of Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, we use these children today as point of contact for the release of miracle children for those who believe you for them. Let it happen speedily. For all the marriages that are here today for thanksgiving and dedication, Father, over them accept our thanksgiving. Together as a family, we declare and declare this marriage is blessed, joyful, fulfilling, and fruitful. 
In the name of Jesus Christ. We use this marriage today as a point of contact for the release of many more miracle marriages. So shall it be. For each and every one of us here today, thanking you for one thing or another, Father, accept our thanksgiving. For the gift of life, we thank you. For provision and protection, we thank you. Whatever you are standing here today thanking God for shall never be turned to sorrow. It shall be multiplied. And this same time next month, we shall have many more reasons to give thanks unto God. So shall it be. Would you take your thanksgiving and dedication seed, lift it up to the Lord, and personally present it unto him as we give him thanks, give him praise, give him glory, and magnify him. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Your seed is hereby declared accepted. And it shall be multiplied back to you a miracle fold. In Jesus' mighty name. Shout the louder, amen. amen. Again, the choir shall be leading us in high praises. We shall be rejoicing as we get back on our seat. Please make sure that your children are word anointed before you get back on your seat. And please drop your thanksgiving and dedication seat. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Give Jesus a big hand, everybody, and please, you may be seated in his presence. It is my new dawn era. This afternoon is my privilege to welcome a number of us who are here today, worshiping for the first time on Sunday like this at the Faith Tabernacle. If today is your first time at the Faith Tabernacle on Sunday, please, would you rise your feet this afternoon? Wherever you are, quickly rise your feet. Give Jesus a big hand, everybody, as they rise everywhere. It's worthy of praise. And worthy of all glory. Please remain standing in God's presence. Remain standing. Our officials will put into your hand a welcome package. You'll be given a slip to fill also. As soon as you receive your copy of both the package and the slip, you may please take your seat and begin to fill that slip in the course of this welcome. As soon as you receive your copy, please be seated and begin filling that slip in the course of this welcome. I want to welcome you today on behalf of Jesus Christ, the head of the church, and on behalf of his servant, the apostle over this commission, Bishop David Oedipo. I want you to know you have come today to a mountain of God and to a city of refuge. And that means every siege against your life and destiny comes to an end today in the name of Jesus Christ. According to scriptures, God has appointed places for his people. He said, I'll appoint a place for my people. They will not move anymore, neither will the source of wickedness afflict them as before time. I believe God has brought you here for an encounter with your appointed place. And that means your blessings that are allotted to you will follow after you from this day in the name of Jesus. But to enjoy the blessings of your appointed place, you must be planted and rooted. The Bible says those who are planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the court of our God. Therefore, my charge to you is to settle down here. Engage everyone that comes from this altar in teachings, instructions, and prophetic directions. And as you put the word of God to work, his word will work wonders in every department of your life. And just like God did for Isaac, he told him to stay in the land. And he set to down there and began to put to and began to plant his seed. And within the space of one year, God blessed him to the point that his testimony became the envy of the entire nation. For you also, as you settle down upon this mountain, 
engaging the seed of the word of God that you receive from this mountain within the space of one year. God will decorate you to the point that your testimony will become the envy of many in the name of Jesus. Somebody believe, say louder, amen. amen. One more time, our first time worshipers, please rise on your feet for a word of prayer and blessing. Rise on your feet for a word of prayer and blessing. Bow your head as we pray. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for these precious ones that you have drawn by your mighty hand. You brought them for a blessing. And by your authority today, we decree each one of them blessed. Whatever they left behind as a concern, let it be converted into an open testimony. And in the name of Jesus, Lord, any one of them that is yet to be saved, let today be the day of their salvation. We thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. Please, you may be seated. Ensure that your forms are completed and submitted to the official closest to you. Again, you're welcome and God bless you. Give Jesus a big hand. In this glorious service, it is offering time. Amen. Please, if you have not already done so, package your tithes, your offerings, and other financial obligation you have towards the Lord. And as you do that, the Bible speaking in Luke chapter 6, verse 38 said, Give, and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, shall men give into your own bosom. For the same measure that you give, that same measure shall be measured back to you. I see somebody getting an overflowing measure today. If you are done doing that, please rise to your feet as we present to the Lord uh, various seats of worship, your tithes, your offerings, and others. And lift up your voice right now. Speak to the Lord as you hand it over to him in worship. Lift up your voice right now and register your voice before him. Make sure heaven is hearing your voice as you present your seat to the Lord. Make sure he's hearing you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And Father, we thank you for the opportunity to worship you with our various seats. For every title today, we declare every devourer is rebuked for your sake. And let the windows of heaven open up again and pour for you a blessing that you cannot contain. In the name of Jesus, for every seed, every other seed you are worshiping the Lord with, we declare shall return back to you a hundredfold over in the name of Jesus. It's blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Please take your seat. We receive the choir to minister and we cast our seed as they minister.
Lift up our two hands to heaven, everybody. And one more time, give God thanks for saying the last Sunday in the month of October for the blessings that have come your way since the month began. Give him thanks for spiritual renewal. Give him thanks for renewal of strength. Give him thanks for blessings of all kind upon you and your household. Now, ask Jesus to speak to you right now. Would you ask him? I want to hear from you, Jesus. I want to hear from you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Somebody's word of settlement is coming through finally today. The word that we said to you for life is coming finally today. The word that we cause you to fulfill your glorious destiny in Christ is coming your way today. The law will settle Nigeria finally today. All the agents of unsettlement will be laid to rest today. Father, honor your word. Let everyone that has participated in this week of fast be openly rewarded. Let their love for you and for this country be openly rewarded. Amen. And thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Among other things, the reason we're seeking the good of the land is because of the house of God. He said, because of the house of God, I will seek thy good. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Verse 7. He said, Peace be within thy walls and prosperity be within thy palaces. Verse 8. For my brethren and companions' sake, I will not say, Peace be within thee. And because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Are those not enough reasons? Therefore, the Lord has restored peace back to Nigeria. Yeah. Our battered economy in response to our prayers shall be restored. There shall be no more wailings on our street. There shall be no more wailings on our street. All wicked.
dead killers in Nigeria will be visited by divine judgment. All their sponsors and their coverings will be exposed into shame and reproach. Nigerians will smile again on the street. No wicked soul shall gain access to the throne of Nigeria. At all levels, every agent of wickedness shall never find their way to the seat of government. We serve a prayer answering God. He has heard us and will yet hear us. Give the Lord a big hand of praise and be seated, please. Welcome to your season of settlement. Amen. This covenant day of settlement will usher you to your own season of settlement. Amen. Every unsettled area of anyone's life shall be visited for a turnaround today. Amen. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Riding the waves of glory has been the teaching series for the month. And we are rounding up this Sunday on this teaching series. And what we've done is to try to explore diverse operations of the Holy Spirit that empower believers to ride the waves of glory. There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences of administration, but the same law. There are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. We are looking at three operations of the Spirit that empower believers to ride the ways of glory. Number one, the Spirit of dedication. Shall we say that together? Say it louder. This spirit empowers believers for sustainable and delightsome dedication. Sustainable, you are up on it. Delightsome, you are doing it delightsomely. You are not being coerced. You don't feel a weight on your shoulder. You're just having the fun of your life serving Jesus, dedicating yourself to his purpose. That needs empowerment. Nothing spiritual is sustainable without the empowerment of the Spirit. He said, by the help of God, I continue to this day. Acts chapter 26 and verse 22. We need the helper for continuity, productivity, and excitement in the process. For continuity in season and out of season. When things are working and when things don't appear to be working, we need the empowerment of the Spirit. We saw this spirit manifested in Jesus in John chapter 10 and verse 17 and 18. Therefore doth my father love me because I lay down my life that I might take it again. No one took it away from me. I lay down of myself. How? I have power to lay down. And I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received from my father. So we need empowerment. Amen. To lay down what is required so as to enter into the fullness of God's plan and purpose for our life. We need empowerment. 
to carry our cross daily and follow him, we need the empowerment of the Spirit. To hate one's life for the cause of the gospel, we need empowerment to venture. If Jesus needed that empowerment, we all need it. And that spirit empowers believers to ride the waves of glory. The hour that the Son of God should be glorified has come. The hour is come, the Son of God should be glorified. But except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. But if it dies, then to bring forth much fruit. That loves his life shall lose it. <laughs> he that hates his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there also my servant be. If any man serve me like that, him will my father honor. So serving God dedicatedly, sustainably, delightsomely, earns us the honor of the father. When the father honors a man, no devil can dishonor him. Receive, therefore, the spirit of dedication upon your life. Yes. You don't know the worth of a seed until when it is sown. The full potentials of a seed can never be made manifest until it is sown to the earth. And so, suddenly it grows, it bears fruit. You sow again part of the seed, and then it grows. And then you say again, and what about at the end of a short time? It's a plantation. Talk about maize, for instance. You're having a plantation. Every seed has minimum 600 other seeds inside it. Minimum. <laughs> Amen. Because a pair will bring forth minimum two cups. A minimum 600 grains on each one. 1,200. When it is sown. If it's not sown on your shelf, it's there for life. I mean, be eaten up. By wiffles or waffles, or what they call them. You can't know your true potential until your life becomes truly dedicated to God. As a lifestyle, you are just enjoying it. You are not under pressure. It's like eating food to you, serving God. One of those dedicated souls in the Old Testament was Joseph. And saw how he began to scale heights. Next to Joseph is the man called Daniel. He would not defy himself with the king's rich food and would never bow to any idol and would never hide himself, hide himself away from people for knowing that he serves God. The king knows that he serves God, all his enemies know that he serves God. And this man prospered in the realm of reign of three kings. Relevant to the government of Babylon for 65 years. An old man full of days. Joseph became the ruler in the land of Egypt. He would not subscribe to Potiphar's pressure, Potiphar's wife's pressure. He would not be de despair in the prison. He was just all out celebrating his connectivity to God. Service to him. Many Josephs will rise here. Amen. Many Daniels will be enthroned here. Amen. Many saviors will rise from here. Amen. 
taken it from Jesus. My mate is to do the will of that sent me and to finish his works. My mate, my own food. My father walked that door and I walk. I must walk while it is day, the night coming when no man can walk. Sustainable dedication will always culminate in supernatural distinction. You are going somewhere. Nothing will destroy your covenant of dedication to God. The mustard seed is said to be the smallest of all seeds that are in the earth. But when it is sown, its potential comes alive. It grows up and throws great branches and the boss of the year coming to make their nest on it. So the least of believers that to be truly dedicated will end up becoming an amazement. And that is you. Yeah. I said, that is you. Yeah. Number two operation of the spirit we are concerned about is the spirit of guidance. Help me say it together. One more time. And they tasted not when he led them through the desert. Isaiah 48 from verse 21. He caused the waters to flow out for them from the rock. He cleaved the rock also and the waters gushed out. In the desert, a gushing in the desert by the leading of the spirit. You will never suffer dry seasons anymore. The Lord is my guide. The Spirit of the Lord is the one leading me. Therefore, I shall not want. Verse 2. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He restores or refresh. He leads me beside these steel waters. Christ is free life. He restores my soul. He leadeth me by, in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yo, yeah. I walk through the
Spirit of God guides God's people into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatever he shall hear from the Father, that shall he speak as he unveils the things to come, one step after another. That's the spirit of guidance. I heard the voice of the Spirit first time in my life, 1976, the month of July. Somehow, by one strange grace, I read the book of T.L. Osborne, The Purpose of Pentecost, at one sitting. One sitting. No standing up. My back would be strained. I would do like this. Oh, I'm not standing up. Let me finish this. The only thing I caught at the end of the day was that the Holy Spirit is a person. It's not written like that in that book, but that's what I saw. He, 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 he. I didn't know that before. And that he guides. Ooh. So I went searching for some of my friends. And then I got to where they were. I couldn't find them. They had left the place. I said, Holy Spirit, if you are truly the spirit of guidance, I don't want to ask anybody about where they are. Guide me to where they are. And for the first time in my life, sir, I had Go ahead. Woo! It's soothing, it's refreshing, it's not coercion. It's not guesswork. I got to a T junction and said, Holy Spirit, where do I go from here? Make a left. Woo! Left. I make you. Go to the next T junction. Holy Ghost, where do I go from here? Make a left. I said, Holy Ghost, hold it. Are you in touch with the GPS of this place? And then he left me, and I could feel the emptiness. Ah, okay. Mm, I made the left. Then he came back. Sweet refreshing, sir. No guesswork. From that day on till forever, I hear the voice of God without any guesswork. I pray that everyone under the sound of my voice, whether on ground or online, from today, I decree that your ears become open to the voice of the Spirit. Shall I go up? Will you deliver the feelings of my hand? And David heard from the Lord. Go up. Amen. Then second time, second Samuel chapter 5, verse 18 to 25. That's Philistines gather themselves again in verse 23. And David said, Shall I go up? He said, No. Thou shalt not go up. He was here directly. Has God changed? From today, I decree every spiritual deaf ear to be open. Yeah. And every time he followed the direction of the Spirit, he conquered. Amen. Riding the waves of glory. And then the enemies came and captured everybody because they went to war without leaving any defense behind. And burned the city. Sons and daughters, wives were carried away. The people thought of stoning David. He encouraged himself in the law. He said, oh, please, please bring me the instrument that we use to ask the Lord. What is he saying? Shall I pursue them? Will you deliver them to my hand? And the Lord said, pursue, for thou shalt surely overcome take them, and without fail, recover all. Come on now. People in the Old Testament were hearing from God. What are you doing? In the name of Jesus, no more guesswork in your life. No more guesswork in your life. Before this day is over, your ear is declared open. The third operation of the Spirit we are considering this morning is the spirit of boldness. Say with me, the spirit of boldness. We have talked about the spirit of dedication and then the spirit of guidance. And then we're talking about the spirit of boldness. Please understand this. Boldness is not big mouthedness. Boldness is not arrogance. Boldness is not pride. Boldness is about making our boast in the Lord. 
Amen. Did you get it now? We are making our boast in the law. So the spirit of boldness empowers us to keep making our boast in the Lord, prevailing circumstances notwithstanding, making one's boast in the Lord. During the days of the attack on my wife's health, my son said, he heard me say, David, listen to me. When I pray, God hears. <laughs> when I pray, God hears. No, it's not. Let's guess. When I pray, God hears. Because I know that I serve a prayer answering God. Boldness is simply making one's boast in the Lord. We saw two instances that were very glaring. David said, the Lord will deliver me from the paw of the lion and of the bear shall deliver me from this Philistine. That's deliver this Philistine to my hand today. And Saul so said, go in peace. What will you say again? <laughs> he was boasting how? In the Lord. Not me that killed the lion. I will kill this man. He was making his boast, what? In the Lord. And then Goliath came and said, ah, 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 egg me. What's happening to me? You came to me with a stick. Am I a dog? And cursed David by his God. David said, are you true? <laughs> he said, okay. Now listen to me. Then David said to the Philistine, direct, you come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. He was making his boast in who? <laughs> he said, to this day will the Lord, who will? The Lord. the Lord will deliver you into my hand. I bet you as he does, I will smite you and take your head from you. And I'll give the carcass of the village into the fowls of the air and to the base of the, of the field that you may know that there is a God in Israel. He was making his boast who? In the Lord. How? He was making, he, he wasn't bragging. He was engaging God. He was committing God. He was using his past testimony to trigger the present required testimony. Making his boast in the Lord, I tell you. When I say I cannot be sick, I'm boasting in the Lord on the already paid price. And you can't do anything against the truth but for the truth. When my wife said she had miscarried, it cannot happen, can I have my food, please? I was making my boast in the Lord. Who said, even your cattle shall not be barren. Somebody hear what I'm talking about? Psalm 34 verse 2, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. And be glad. And be glad. Then we saw Daniel under the harassment of Nebuchadnezzar, the most wicked king of those days. Did I hear you didn't bow to my grave when you were set up? When you heard the trumpet. <laughs> now, <laughs> and you don't want to worship my God? If you be ready that at whatever time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sacra, psaltery, and dosima, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the image which I've set up, I've made well. But if you worship not, you shall be cast in the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. 
And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hand? Ah! Shedra, Meshana, Bengo, say, you are talking about my God like that. They said to the king, Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, they call him by his name. We are not careful to answer you in this matter. <laughs> Our God, who we serve, is able to deliver us from the fiery, the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us. We know him. But if not, Make known to you that we will not serve thy God. Go to hell. Nor worship the golden image which you have set up. Nebuchadnezzar put his hand in his finger, in his mouth. Ah, yeah, yeah. Ah, ah. Do you know I'm Nebuchadnezzar? Ah, ah. Ah. I will fry you today. So they cast them into the fire. Seven times hotter. The people threw them, they were born to ashes. They didn't get into the fire. The heat in the environment of the fire killed them. But they got inside. And they met in there the fourth person. Amen. Who turned the fiery furnace to a cold room? Amen. There was no spare, spare of fire on them. What was at work? The spirit of boldness that empowered them to make their bones in the Lord. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Open your mouth wide, I'm going to feel it. But Israel will not happen to me. Neither will they walk in my ways. <laughs> they walk after their own heart lost. And they walked in their own counsels. Oh, that Israel had happened to me, and I've done that which I said. I should have soon subdued their enemies of them and turned my hands against their adversaries. In the name of Jesus, receive today afresh on your life the spirit of boldness. Yeah. When they perceived the boldness of Peter, James, and John, and knowing that they were ignorant and unlearned men, the Bible says, they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. <laughs> Everybody will take knowledge of you from now. Yeah. By the spirit of boldness, sickness and disease will give up on you. Yeah. Every oppression of the wicked will give up on you. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. 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 Yeah. And they pray that it might be filled with the Holy Ghost and to speak the word of God with boldness. And the place was shaken where they were gathered together and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with boldness. When Peter was filled with the Holy Ghost, no devil could stop him. When they said, you mustn't preach again in this name, he said, judge ye yourself whether to listen to you or to God. But as for us, we cannot but speak those things we have heard and say, go to hell. The spirit of boldness came on them. The spirit of boldness came on them. Receive that on your life today. Can I tell you something? You can never have your lion share without a lion heart. Many of us have been cheated over and again. You can never have your lion share in life without a lion heart. The lion secures his territory by roars. Huh? Don't cross the red line. You are around the king's palace. Oh! Every
every beast knows that sound. Yes, sir. They say, eh? Did you hear? Where is the sound coming from? From here? Kojuma <laughs> Ribi. be desiccating in your territory if it doesn't hear you. He needs to hear you. I began to roar in one of those nations. We went for a crusade and then it drizzled. Before we closed in the service. I came up. I said Come tomorrow. If it rains, this land will never see rain again. Hello? <laughs> Following day. Peke. Rain. Where are you from? The atmosphere was thick, but rain will never drop. We began praising God, and then a blind eye got open. We closed the service. No drop of rain. Your eternity is so voiceless. That's why the devil is climbing on your life. And then you say, a monkey is pursuing you in the night, yo. Monkey. <laughs> there are those in this church that no lion can dare pursue them. Because they will turn back like David. Take them by the beard. Gah! Where do you think you are? Then some others will find monkeys running after them. Even good. <laughs> Amen. Open your mouth wide. I will subdue your enemies and turn my hand against your adversaries. Open your mouth wide. Now, receive a fresh endowment of the spirit of boldness now. Some demonic person got repossessed with those devils and they were struggling with him. I said, leave him, my friend. Mm, I've not said anything. Why couldn't move? The voice, leave him, paralyze him. And I pointed my long finger at him. The angels that left their first estate and kept on their habitation, they have been chained up in darkness awaiting the day of judgment. What are you doing here? And all the devils left. You need the spirit of boldness to dominate your environment. Receive that now in Jesus' name. Amen. Too much! Too much! Amen! We have lost so much ground to the enemy by a closed mouth. God spoke to me. It took me six months to build, to create the world and the heavens and the earth. I won't need two months to finish an ordinary building. And I responded, Two months then, too much. I came down from that trip in Kano. I said, folks, listen to me. Two months, too much. September 18, 1989 is a reality. How many of us knew that? We were all chanting it with confidence, with boldness, without caring where the money is coming from, without caring whether the time is available to get it done. Did you get it done or not? Well, you won't lose ground to the enemy anymore. Put your right hand on your forehead. Receive a fresh impartation of the spirit of boldness right now. Amen. Today is our covenant day of settlement. Amen. Amen. The kingdom of God operates on keys. It is wisdom to use the right key to any particular door, otherwise, you'll be struggling with it. What are the requirements for assessing your own world of settlement? Number one, be born again. That is the foundation to every provision of the kingdom. And if the foundation be destroyed, the righteous can do nothing. Until we are saved, 
we have no part or lot in what redemption offers. Settlement is one of the offers of redemption. You have to become a member of a family before you can share of the inheritance. It's salvation that makes us sons of God. And God's inheritance is limited to the redeemed. My peace I give unto you. That talks about heavenly peace. Not as the word give, give I unto thee. Be ye not troubled, neither be ye afraid. One of the fruits of this regenerated spirit, born again spirit, is peace. The fruit of the spirit is love Joy, peace, peace. When you are saved, you become a partaker of the peace of heaven. That's where the journey to settlement begins. But the sorrow of them that hasten after another God shall be multiplied. Don't add anything to God. You'll never be settled. You'll never be settled. I've not added one thing to God in my life. Human or diabolical things. And I'll be 50 years old in the faith next February. Amen. I still sleep like a baby today. Never suffer sleeplessness in my life. I don't know sickness or disease. If anyone has been in Christ a new creature, all things are passed away, all things have become new. New birth is not an ideology, it's an experience. Don't assume salvation, experience it. Don't assume salvation, experience it. My mother was so churchy, she gave back to me in a church building. She went for early morning prayer, going to labor, I was born. But she wasn't saved. And she carried a plague of rheumatism for 38 years. But when she gave her life to Jesus, rheumatism went to where it came from. She lived to be 95, never saw it again. New birth is an experience. New birth is what? Number two. Settle down with the world. You shall know the truth. The truth shall make you free. Whoever knows the truth shall be free indeed. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. They are restless. They're going up and down looking for answers. Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy rest, and I will give you rest. Come and learn of me. You shall find what? Rest for your souls. Go for the world in every unsettled area of your life. Are you struggling with sickness? Go for books and cities that address this subject and settle to learn. And as you know the truth, the truth sets you free. As you discover the truth, you recover from your woes. Just the way, same way you go to a pharmacist or chemist and you buy drugs that treat your sickness. Go to a Christian bookstore and look for anointed materials of men and women that have proofs of what they are talking about. Not who are terrorizing. Materials of breakthrough all taught by those men and women who know the meaning of breakthrough by proofs. You want healing? Buy books on healing. You know, I go 
got my liberty from any mentality of sickness from the book of Egan, seven keys to divine healing. And suddenly I saw Matthew 8, 17. That was my liberation point from sickness mentality that somebody already took my infirmity longest time and he never returned it. So how can you find it there? He can't be there. So I scream, yeah, I can never be seen. What if I never read that book? I may still be struggling with one thing or another. 1979. What? Somebody's breaking forth. Yeah. That is, let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. That will be 40 years next year, sir. 40 years of liberty by knowledge. Set to men by knowledge. So don't wait for these 40 minutes teaching in church. Go for areas of concern in your life and settle down to search. You want your fruit bearing to be settled as a married woman and a married man. Read books on fruitfulness. Such as you shall not be barren. You want settlement in your finances? Read materials like covenant of wealth. Understand the financial prosperity. Go on a search. Only he that searches finds. Go on a search. I went with Kenneth Copeland books 1982 March. Went on a three-day fast to find rest in my financial life. By third day, I found it and I screamed, yeah, I can never be poor. Go find it. He that seek it, find it. To him that knock at the door shall be open. Nothing like brace like the truth. Nothing like brace like the truth. Nothing like brace from the path of darkness like the power of light. And the entrance of his word give it light. All of our troubles are by the operation of trials of darkness. Settle down. Somebody read the book to to, I mean, keys to divine hell. In page, on page 20, he said, Discover that the devil is not a gentleman. I never said that. But light came. Down there, you sleep in here forever. Get out. So I jumped out. Told them in the hospital, I'm going home. And the daughter was a doctor in that hospital. But back in the day, please don't go. He said, I'm going home. He left for home 1986. I saw him 1996. He showed me a copy of the letter he wrote to reply his testimony. And he said, I'm the man that got delivered from high blood pressure and hypertension. 1986. He said, I'm still healing and hearty. 1996. The power of light. Great peace have they who love their law. Nothing shall offend them. Nothing. Very quickly as we round up. Build your faith. Faith is the only way to take the liberty of what you have found. You have found it yet. But you need faith to take delivery. It is to everyone according to his faith. Faith has to be consciously built. Faith comes by hearing and understanding the word of God. So consciously build your faith. He said building yourself up upon your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost. All men of faith consciously build their faith. Build your faith. They that believed have entered into rest and have ceased from their own struggles. He that has entered into his rest, he hath also seen from his own works as God did from his. 
build your faith that will bring you to your realm of rest. Don't assume it. Cultivate it. And then, of course, number four, enter into a covenant to make serving God your priority for living. And in response, it will give you rest, run about. Second Chronicles chapter 15, verse 12. They entered into a covenant to serve the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their desire. And he gave them rest, run about. Verse 15. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and and all these things shall be added to you in grand styles. You won't be struggling for them. They'll be coming to you. All these places will be coming to you and overtake you. That's where it is. All these blessings will be coming to you and overtaking you. Coming, coming, seek your face, and all these things shall be added to you. Enter into covenant to make serving God your priority for living, and then it will give you rest. Run about. How many want to run about rest? How many want rest in all areas of their life? How many want rest in their health? You want rest in your finances? You want rest in your family? You want rest in your career? You want rest in your business? He said, we'll give you rest round about. Yeah. Welcome to your season of settlement. Yeah. And number five, as we close, cry out for your settlement. Say with me, I must cry out for my settlement. Cry out for your settlement. You must cry out. This man called Jabez was a bundle of misfortune. He was born in sorrow. Sorrow was part of his life. He cried out and God granted him that which he requested. First Chronicles chapter 4 and verse 9 and 10. But he would have, been, he would have died blind. But he cried out, Jesus, say to me, give me my sight. And he got his side back. Amen. As he can cry out, is this how you will kill me? No. Remember now, God. And God said to Isaiah, go back and tell him, I've added 15 more years to his days. Cry out for your settlement. On what basis? Number one, you are not permitted to suffer beyond the why in redemption. Every child, how many wants to warn their children suffering? When they have power to set them free, would they watch them suffering? God cannot be watching you and I suffering. And they say, why? Well, he said, look, let them just suffer a while. A while means a moment. No more affliction of long-standing suffering in your life. Amen. For our light affliction is but for a moment. Second Chronicles, Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. But work it for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. A moment, a while. That's what you must cry out. As that trouble lasted beyond a while, as it lasted before a moment, then you are entitled to settlement. After you have suffered a while, strengthen, establish, perfect. And said to you, First Peter five ten, you are due for settlement today. Amen. Sorrow may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Whatever has gone beyond a night entitles you to settlement. So today is declared your day of settlement. Did this settle them or not? Whatever has passed one night entitles you to instant settlement today. Yeah. It has gone beyond one hour. You are entitled to settlement. It was made whole that self same hour. God 
one wants to say to you. Osea, I mean, Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. Now is the accepted time. Today. The day of salvation. It has gone beyond the day you are entitled to salvation. You are entitled to settlement. Can I hear your amen? amen. After two days, he will revive us. Hosea chapter 6 and verse 2. On the third day, he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. After three days, you are entitled to settlement. Has that issue lasted beyond three days? Today is your day. Yeah. Your marital destiny will be settled today. Yeah. Your fruitfulness destiny will be established today. Yeah. Your breakthrough destiny in Christ will be established today. Yeah. In your business, in your, your, your career, your settlement is here. Yeah. Your head is settled today. In a moment, I will let you cry out for two or three minutes and then we'll be closing the service. But for now, give the Lord a big hand. You are here in this service and you are not born again yet. That is your number one step into your heritage of settlement. You have to belong to his family because before you can be a partaker of his inheritance. Wherever you are right there, you want me to pray with you to be saved. Please stand to your feet. God bless you. Stand to your feet. Everybody that wants to surrender his or her life to Christ today, stand to your feet. God bless you. God bless you wherever you are. Stand to your feet. I'll be praying for you right there. Stand to your feet. This is your day of salvation. Don't miss this for anything. Please stand to your feet. God bless you. Stand to your feet. God bless you. You want to surrender your life to Christ today, stand to your feet. In the name of Jesus. There are also people here that need to rededicate their life to Jesus. You are here, you want to rededicate your life to Jesus. Can I ask you to stand, please? Stand to your feet, I'll pray with you. You want to reconnect back to God. Stand to your feet today. You want to enjoy the reality of new birth in your life over again. Stand to your feet. Partial connection can be frustrating. Stand to your feet. One step in and one step out won't help you. Stand to your feet. You want to rededicate your life to Christ. Stand to your feet. Everybody in the first and second call, please move to the nearest aisle to where you are. Some officials are waiting for you there, and then I'll be praying for you on that ground. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every other person in this sanctuary began to call forth your own settlement. Any unsettled area of your life is long overdue for settlement. It's gone beyond an hour, gone beyond overnight, gone beyond a day, gone beyond three days. You are due for settlement. Please begin to call for it where you are seated. Begin to call for it. Begin to call for it. Set to me in this area, Jesus. Set to me today. I'm one of your redeemed. You saved my soul. There is nothing you have with you that I cannot have said. So set to me today, Jesus. Set to me in this area. Set to me in that area. Call for it. Call for it. Everyone that cares, Christ will have his audience. Call for it. All of us who are standing to be prayed for, please bow your heads and pray this prayer after me from the depth of your heart. Everyone standing up to be prayed for, pray this prayer after me right now. Lift up your right hand and say after me, Lord Jesus. All those that are standing up, say after me, Lord Jesus. I surrender my life to you today. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again. That I may be justified. Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you today. And I proclaim you as my Lord and my Savior. And I believe my sins are now forgiven. I'm saved. I'm restored back to the faith. I'm now a child of God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Amen. In Jesus' name. Please quiet for now as I pray over these precious souls. In the name of Jesus, all of you that pray this prayer, the power of sin is broken from your life. I cover each of you with the blood of Jesus. You will run this race to the end. You will not step back into darkness. You will live a triumphant life. 
you will make heaven at last. In the name of Jesus. I cover each of you with the precious blood of Jesus. Remain covered till the day of his appearing. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Congratulations. Church, give the Lord a big hand. Please complete your sleeves and pass them on to those church officials around you. And be reminded of Believers Foundation class. The outreach office will get in touch with you today to help you locate the one nearest to where you live. In Jesus' name. Shall we all rise, please? Amen. Amen. Say with me today, not today. Say with all your heart. Lift up your two hands. Jesus, I believe in my settlement right. You saved my soul to settle me. You raised me up to sit together with you. In heavenly places. The eternal headquarters of settlement. Lord Jesus, I believe that every unsettled area of my life is finally settled today. My fruitfulness is settled. My marital destiny is settled. My business and career destiny is settled. My health is settled. My family is settled. My children are settled. I'm settled in my finances. I shall never beg. I shall never struggle for survival. I'm free at last. I'm free forever. Lift up those two hands. In the name of Jesus, your settlement is established today. This week marks the beginning of your weeks of testimonies of settlement. Many people here will receive good news of settlement today. Before this week is over, everybody is singing a settlement song. You are singing your settlement song. You are singing your settlement song. You are singing your settlement song. In the name of Jesus. Nigeria is settled today. No more bloodshed in Nigeria. Nigeria shall not see war. Killer agents are laid to rest today. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. Lift up those hands and give God thanks. Amen. In Jesus' name. Please sit down for two minutes. The fasting ends today. Please take advantage of the few moments remaining to cause your voice to be heard on high. That intercessory prayer guidelines, it's, it's complete. So pray it. Pray it one after another before your break. And thanking God at every prayer point for answers. Whatever we have prayed all the course of the week is answered already. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. I've spoken in all of the three services on the judgment God is visiting this land with. Those who won't let Nigeria rest, God will lead them to rest. Amen. Those who sponsor and perpetrate killings and offer coverings for killers to keep killing, God will lead them to rest. Amen. In the name of Jesus. But as for this country, God will give us peace by all means. Yeah. 
Peace by all means. Peace by all means. He had to drown Pharaoh and his army to give Israel peace. To give Israel peace. Because this man followed them after they have been delivered by a great deliverance. He still followed them. He drowned Pharaoh and the host of Egypt in the Red Sea. To give them peace by all means. Anyone that has vowed to be part of these machinations of senseless killings, wicked men, there may be women among them, judgment has come upon them. Judgment has come upon them. For it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulations to them that trouble us. Every trouble, troubler of Nigeria gets into irrecoverable trouble from this moment. Yeah. Two very gruesome killings took place in the course of the week. One in Adamawa State, where some villages were raised, churches destroyed. Mm. I'm not aware of any arrests is made, but that's the culture. Send it this terrible. This last week, a first class chief, just like first class Oba, first class Eze, first class Emir, was slaughtered like a chicken. And his body dumped by the roadside, Kaduna Abuja Road. Christian. 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 Because they want to turn the local governments to emirates. Christian. There is nothing these wicked people can't imagine. Naros Kerada Sangakoka. Abacha said, when killings go on for 24 hours, unabated. Government must be aware of it. Government must be in the know of it. Government must be back of it. Abacha said that, sir. I've never been a soldier. Let us remove the mask. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This government knows about this. Otherwise, some people claim responsible for killing. The just callous killings of our 200 people, they were not arrested. Am I the one to arrest them? No. They want to destroy the nation and flee away. They don't have any heart for anybody. But as the Lord live it, every prayer we pray, they know it because it's on the website. It's answered on their heads. Yeah. And the peace of God is restored to Nigeria. Yeah. They killed his four orderlies. They said they kidnapped him. They were expecting him to return and to find his body by the roadside. Karuna has been locked up in 24 hour coffee. I don't think it has any meaning anyway. They have killed the person they want to kill. Enough is enough. Stand to your feet, everybody. What is your business, Mr. Prophet? The souls of men are my business. Anybody you kill from the north, the south, the east, and the west, may do bad, may do not, may do south. It's all souls are mine. I've been in this thing since 1979, proclaiming fast and walking through it for this nation. In the name of Jesus, we have entered our era of settlement as a nation. Every agent of unsettlement comes under a curse today. Shall we together share the goodness of the Lord and personalize it, surely? 
God's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. It is my good on error. What eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, shall be the order of the day of my life this year. Congratulations, amen and amen. Congratulate somebody as you go and be blessed. Be reminded we came in after the worship offering was received for the fourth service. There are officials around the altar.